everyone, and welcome to 1923 Main Street, home of the Daddy Daughter Disney Travel Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Mike Bellobradic. And I'm Amelia Bellobradic. And today we will be answering the top 10 most asked questions about Walt Disney World travel. Yes, indeed, we will. And these 10 questions came from over the past 10 years of me blogging and a few years as a Disney travel advisor, just a cumulative number of all the questions that we get on a consistent basis. So they are not in any particular order, but they are definitely the 10 most asked questions that we get. So we thought today we'd do a show answering those 10 questions from our perspective. So how would you like to begin? Well, we are going to start with question number one, when is the best time of year to go? And for me, there's not really a definitive answer. It really depends on your family and what you were looking for in your idea of a perfect Walt Disney World yeah, vacation. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I sometimes see people answering this question with, this is the best time to go. But here's the thing. Best time based on what? Best time based on lower crowds, best time based on price, best time based on weather. Certain parties you might want to go yeah, to. Yeah, special events. So it it really, it depends. The answer is it depends. So all times of year, there are certainly cer- some times of year that are not ideal from a few areas, and those typically are major holidays where everybody's on the same holiday. For example, Christmas. The Christmas yeah. week is one of the busiest, if not the busiest time of year. If you want to go at Christmas... To get the Christmas spirit, I would always say go around the second to third week of December. You get all the yeah. Christmas activity and it's great. Now, I'll say one thing. From a general perspective, the best time to go, uh, I would say, would be right after Labor Day. You still have good yeah. weather. Kids are back in school. There are two parties going on, the Food and Wine Festival, the Halloween party. So it's a good time of year. But people have kids Uh, If you have kids in school, it's challenging to go. So really, there is no best time to go. There are times that are better than other times for a number of reasons. But the answer to this is, what is most important to you? And then pick the time of year that suits that. And just try to pick weeks when there are not major run Disney races or holidays, things Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, like if it's crowds, maybe go in August, like late August before your kids start school if you live in Canada. Or if you do live in the U.S., you can't go because your kids are already back in school. So it depends when, like, because certain times are all March breaks are, like, on on one week, and then it's super busy in March break. But certain times Canada has a March break and U.S. has a March break, so then it's not so bad. Well, it's actually spring break. (laughs) Not so much. Ours is in March, but not everybody's is in March. Spring break. So, yeah, that's a good point. So... Just don't worry about when is the best time to go, but try not to go on a major holiday when everybody, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, those times of year when everybody is off at once. They're they're very busy. And it takes five hours to walk down Main Street. Indeed. All right. Question numero deux. I get this one a lot, especially obviously when I was selling Disney travel, but how much does a Disney vacation cost? And... Obviously, there's a range. There are three levels of hotels from value to deluxe. But the point here is that a Disney vacation tends to be on the more expensive side. It is not a budget destination. So uh, people, when they ask this question, are wondering if they can do it on the cheap. You can do it for less expensive and you can do it for a uh, higher end, which is more expensive. But my mantra here is a Disney World vacation is not a budget vacation. There are things you can do to reduce the costs, but it's going to cost you for a family of three or four, 2500 probably minimum. And, you know, if you're going into the deluxe resort end, you can easily get up to $8,000 for a week. Yeah. And that does not include your flight. Yes. If you need one. But also, it's not like you're getting a cheap thing for your money. You are getting a lot for what you pay for. Like you get what you pay for. And you know, we call this value. And that that's this is value. And the other thing I often say on this is Walt Disney himself never built Disney parks to be cheap, a yeah. cheap place to go. He built them to be immersive, 
in-depth, highly themed environments, and that costs money, and that's why it's not an inexpensive place to go. Yeah, if you want a cheaper theme park, there are definitely cheaper places to go, but a Walt Disney World vacation is not a cheap or budget vacation. So it's going to cost you, and uh, other thing I'll say is if you can stay in a deluxe resort, you should, uh, especially the, the, the main ones we recommend because they are closer to the magic in most cases. And if that means putting off a year to save more money, I would recommend doing that because a deluxe over a value, in my opinion, will have a fairly significant impact on how much you enjoy your vacation, especially if yeah. you have young kids in tow. Like, I'd rather go once every two years and stay at the Grand Floridian than every single year and stay at, like, Art of Animation or something like that. Yeah, nice hotels, but yeah. dif different type of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Okay, so question number three. Where should I stay? Well, we were just talking about that. So there are, uh, but there's two parts to this. So there are three levels of resort, value, moderate, and deluxe. And the answer to this is... Stay on site. Yes. I, well, that depends. Are you doing an Orlando vacation? We're assuming you are doing a Walt Disney World vacation. Yeah. If you're doing an Orlando vacation, maybe not. But if you are doing a Walt Disney World vacation, 100%, there is no question about this whatsoever. You have to stay on site for the best experiences. And if you are teetering between any of those two levels of resort hotels, always level up. A moderate is going to give you a nicer atmosphere than a value, and a deluxe is going to give you that much nicer value than a moderate. <laughs> Not value, but <laughs> experience than a moderate. So, yeah. you know, if, it's, if you're wondering if it's worth the money, I would suggest that it is. So consider that when you're thinking about where you should stay. Yeah, and the locations, they tend to put the more expensive hotels closer to certain parks. So yes, that's indeed also they do. To think about. Okay, number four. This is a great one. Ooh, I get this I get a to lot. I answer this one. All right, this question, uh, it comes in two parts. So sometimes I get asked, what is the best age to visit Walt Disney World? Or how young is too young? Yeah, that's the other way this question is phrased for me. So really what people are trying to get at here is, is it worth taking my two-year-old or should I wait till my child turns a certain age? Now, this is where having Amelia on the show adds a lot. So why don't you give your thoughts and then I'll give my perspective based on your growing up Disney. Go ahead. Well, I do think for me, I put a lot of thought into this and for me the perfect age, and I think this was probably when I had the most amazing time was when I was seven. Seven is a great age to go. Because when you're like five or six, you're too old to be in a stroller, but you don't want to walk. You were in a stroller when you were five. When you were six, you're too old to be in a stroller, but you do not want to walk around. You're going to complain. Trust me, I know. And I'll say one thing. If, you know, it makes it easier on you the, the longer your child can stay in a stroller. It's just easier to maneuver around the parks than having little legs walk because you're walking up to 10 miles a day easily on a on a Disney vacation. And I'm going to say this from, a, from my perspective with Amelia growing up. I would say around the age of two is when she really started interacting and enjoying the characters. And one of my favorite pictures is Amelia at two years old with Minnie Mouse. So she definitely, it was quite magical for her at two. So but two, I don't remember it. But she doesn't remember it only through pictures. The first experiences that she actually remembers are around age four. So yeah, the, four, mostly five, I think. So the answer to this question varies. Amelia just told us that she believes seven is a perfect all-around age. Yeah, I think it, seven's a great age because this... It um, also, you also ride heights, right? Yeah, this, is, this might be just me, but when I was seven, I was just over 48 inches, which means like when, when you're a seven-year-old, you might not want to go on the most high throw rides, but the thing is the entire park is open to you. Well, height-wise, you're not restricted like you can't go on a ride. You can choose not to, but at 48 inches, you can go. So I've, if you want to go on certain thrill rides, I would definitely recommend 
wait till you're 48 inches, which for me was around age seven. And we, cowboy boots were a great way to get you an extra inch. <laughs> yes, cowboy boots are very helpful. <laughs> she did go on Tower of Terror when she was four, and can't remember if that was the cowboy boot. I know Rock and Roll Coaster was definitely a cowboy boot ride. So, yeah, so, so we'll say we'll say seven years old, according to Amelia, is a good all around age. I would say, you know, from two. And yeah. up is an age where they, your child will actually have fun and enjoy it. And then four and up is when they'll actually remember those memories. Of course, yeah. everyone's, there's people there with newborns and so on. And there's baby care centers. So don't worry about that in the parks. There's lots of uh, places for you to take a newborn yeah. or, or a very young child. But we'll mm-hmm. give you those ages for yeah, how young is too young. Seven, perfect height. Probably won't complain about walking because their legs are long enough. The magic will still be real. They'll remember it. It's everything. Perfect. So this leads us right into question number five, the one I get quite a bit from people, um, more so when I was doing travel is, but, you know. It's just for kids. It's just for kids. Is, what, what am I going to do there? My kids want to go, but isn't this just for kids? First of all, no, it's, it's not. And this is common for someone who, you know, we're frequent travelers, obviously, and so are a lot of you who are listening, but some people aren't, and they are going to go on one or two Disney vacations. And when they've never been, their assumption is really that Walt Disney World is just theme parks. So it's not just for kids. There are quite a few adult things to do. And this is sometimes where I would talk about Victorian Alberts, for example. I said yes. there's, there's a restaurant there that doesn't allow children under 10. Also, there are bars in the hotels. If you think those are for kids, I'm sorry, but you know. And it's actually doing a lot of improving in downtown yes. Disney and other things to do. Um, mm. I did write a blog post once called The Secret Disney ba- Vacation because I had parents who wanted to go without their kids. Uh, And they were trying to figure out how to hide (laughs) the trip from their kids that they would sneak away. And I said, okay, no photos, right? Don't take your phones. (laughs) That sort of thing. So no, it is not just for kids. There's lots of things for adults to do. So don't worry about that in the least. Question number six is sort of a variation on that. Won't I just get bored? I mean, I'm going to theme parks every day. Yeah. So this is another thing a lot of people think. Won't I get bored there? I don't want to go to theme parks every day. So... The answer here is Walt Disney World Resort, especially, much more so than Disneyland, is a lot more than just theme parks. There are water parks, golf courses, mini golf courses, downtown Disney, sorry, Disney Springs now. (laughs) At least I didn't say the shopping village like my sister does. There is a ton of things to do outside the parks, and I encourage you to look those up. Uh, Horseback riding, archery. surfing at Typhoon Lagoon. There are so many experiences that you can do out, or just renting yeah. a bike, chilling, walking around. People like to, don't forget about sitting by the pool, right? Don't overcrowd yeah. your schedule. We talked about that in our tips episode. Yeah, Like I've been there 27 times, which is hundreds of park visits. And I have never once been bored in a Disney theme park. Well, I mean lines, but like. Well, the, the, the key is to don't spend yeah. eight hours there. Honestly, uh, even if it's your first time, I highly recommend go first thing in the morning. That's You'll hear us say that repeatedly. Go for rope drop or when the park's first open, stay there till 12, 1 or 2, and then leave. Go back to the hotel, swim, do other things, go to Disney Springs, whatever it is. Don't, you can burn out in parks and there's so much more to Walt Disney World than theme parks. So uh, no, you won't get bored going to theme parks every day because you're not going to overdose on theme parks every day. That would be my answer to question number six. Yes. So moving on to question numero set or seven. Should I get a Disney dining plan? Well, again, it varies. It does vary. So first of all, if you can hit one of those free dining offers by Disney, sure, you're going to take the Disney dining plan. Is it really free? Well, it's probably baked into the pricing somehow, but as far as that offer goes, it will be free based on what you're paying. You won't pay any extra for the dining plan. If you are not big eaters, if you don't typically have to sit down and have three meals a day at certain times type of thing, then maybe not. I'm not a big fan of the Disney dining plan personally for our family, so I would ask these questions a lot of people and sometimes say in my opinion don't spend it's not worth the money you're not going to get the value out of it a yeah. lot of a lot of top restaurants take two credits 
for me, I would not recommend it. So think about it. Do a lot of online reading. For some people, it does make sense. Uh, People who like to eat a lot or typically spend a lot of money or always order the most expensive things on the menu. (laughs) (laughs) If you're not doing a lot of signature restaurants that require two credits, could be worth it. It is convenient. I'll give the dining plan that. It makes it just sort of easy because you don't have to have dinner cash around. You are still going to have to pay for drinks and tips. But um, But even I've mentioned in our top five tips episode, you'll get to the end of the week and you'll have like, ooh, I have snack credits left. So what are you going to do? You're going to buy all these snacks and then you get home and you're so stuffed. Yeah, if you have to do that, um, get some things to give to your friends. That'd be my suggestion. Little giveaways or to pack away for the kids for or yourself (laughs) for for future timing. So um, should I get a dining plan? It's not a it's not a definitive yes or no like a lot of these are. So just think about it. Uh, We don't anymore personally. Yes. So this is another number eight. Yes, number eight. Number eight is a, another one of these. Well, here is why you would like it, and here is why you would not. And the question is: Should I get a park hopper? And what is a park hopper? People ask that. So park hopper is really easy. If you get a regular Disney World uh, parks ticket, you are allowed to go to one park per day. You can go in and out of that park for the whole day. You can go in the morning to the Magic Kingdom. You can come back at night and go to the Magic Kingdom. So I call my personally, I call Park Hopper the ability to hold the key to Disney. Ooh, with a Park Hopper, holding the key allows you to go to as many parks as you want every single day. Yes. So you can do all four parks in one day if you want to take on that popular challenge. Or you can go to one park in the morning and have dinner at another park, whatever the case may be. Or if you want to go to a special event, like we mentioned earlier in the episode, and those mostly hold at the Magic Kingdom. But if you have a fast pass... And Epcot. Yeah, Epcot. But the Mickey's Not oh, So the Scary ticketed Halloween events, Party. Yeah. yeah, the ticketed events mostly are at the Magic Kingdom. And if you have a dining reservation for breakfast at Epcot, or if you have the latest Fast Pass at Hollywood and you want to go to the party later, well, never fret, Park Hopper is here. And here's the thing about Park Hopper too. When you're when you're booking it, you'll see the pricing. I mean, you go to if you're booking your trip online or if a travel agent's doing it for you, make sure you ask because the Park Hopper pricing is not it's not like it's double. You're not paying twice. So it's yeah. not, it's actually on a, on a full week's vacation, it's not that much more. You don't have to go to a park two times every day. Uh, I, I personally think the park hopper is well worth the money because it just opens up flexibility for dining in parks. If you've gone to another park in the morning or just if you're on a whim, if you're at night and go, ha, ah, I feel like going to Galaxy's Edge tonight to walk around, you can do it. You won't be restricted in any way. Yeah, and a lot of people think, oh, Park Hopper, yeah, it sounds great, but I'm not going to want to go to two parks in one day. That's just like, no, I'm going to be too tired. And then you book a dinner reservation, but then you can only get the Fast Pass over here, and you're like, I should have got Park Hopper. Yeah, so think about it. I, I highly recommend it. So if you were to ask me, I would say, yes, get the Park Hopper. Yeah, me too. Okay, question number nine. Do I need to rent a car or? So, yes, this is a good question for people who haven't really been there. It's big, but Walt Disney World also has a awesome transportation system. As much as I don't like Disney buses or complain about them because we go so much. Yeah. uh, You really don't need a car with a few exceptions. So first of all, you can take the Magical Express for free from the airport to get to your on-site resort hotel, so you're good there. Yes. Once you're on-site, you can take Disney transportation, boats, buses, and monorails. Or Lyft and Uber, which are very cheap to get around. Or Lyft and Uber Mm -hmm. on the grounds, very cheap to get around. Also, if you are not a DVC member, you have to pay for parking, which is very annoying if you have a car and are not going to use it very often. There are a couple of resorts where I actually like having a car. So the answer is you don't need a car. But if you like freedom and you are staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Oh, yeah. Saratoga Springs Resort. Yes. Or Old Key West Resort. 
I would recommend that, and even Wilderness Lodge, mm-hmm. that I, I'm not saying you need to rent a car, but you will you will appreciate yeah. having a car in particular at any one of those four resort hotels. But again, you don't need one. So really, do you need to rent a car? The answer is no. Will no. it be more convenient? In some cases, yes. But for me, you have to be prepared to take a Lyft or Uber. You can never fully rely on Disney buses. Never rest your, will you get to a fast pass on time on the Disney bus ever. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. I was going to say monorails break down too, but there are usually other ways to get around. Okay, we have one left. This is another question that I used to get quite a bit. So how many days is long enough? Like what's a good time period to go? There's nothing that's long enough. (laughs) So people would usually ask this, do I have to go for seven days? Again, they're not that familiar. So these are questions for the uninitiated that you just don't don't really know. So we're giving you the answers. So four days, I would say, is a good minimum. And also that is yeah. based on ticket pricing because the mm-hmm. Magic Your Way, the park ticket passes after four days get much cheaper per day uh, on an average when you buy a package. So... Four, five, six, or seven. Obviously, seven days is a it's a good it is a yeah. good week long vacation. So if go for a week. Yeah. Can but, you go for four, five, or six? Absolutely. Can but let me just mention this. So in our episode five, we mentioned that Disneyland, California, three days is about a good time to go. Disney World is double the size. It's far more than double. Yes, but it's at least double the size. It's like 10 times the size yeah. or something. But the parks, there's twice as many parks. And downtown Disney is probably around twice as big. Disney Springs now. D- Disney Springs. It's fairly huge. So if you take three days and you times it by two, then that's six days. And if you're already there for six days, just add an extra day and go for a week. It's and perfect and here's time. the other thing on this one. Try not to think of your Disney vacation as, okay, I'm just going to get in. I got to get to every park and get out. That's when, because yeah. people will say the follow-up to this that I would get is, yeah, but can't I see all parks in five days? Well, first of all, you can't see everything in every park in a week. I mean, you can't yeah. see everything in every park really in, in a enjoyable way in five trips. So don't think of your Disney vacation as the one time I'm going to go and I'm never going again. Or if you do, just be sure you see what you want to see. Because yeah. you cannot do everything with one visit to a park and really appreciate it. Especially now the way that they're adjusting fast yes. past tiers and, you and that have sort of thing. To, you have to think, what do I want to do the most? Yeah, you don't want to grind do people that. to the wall. You, I mean, yeah. you'll see kids melting down because they're on hour eight and it's 100 degrees and their parents are really pushing them through to the end. That's not an enjoyable Walt Disney World vacation. So yeah. do yourself a favor and don't plan it that way. So how many days are enough? I would say four or five minimum, seven days is a good vacation. You get yeah. to go to every park at least once. And then the ones you think you'll like most of all, go again. Yeah, You want to do things twice. You want to do different things in the exactly. parks. Exactly. Really take the time in the parks to actually enjoy them. So many, There's so much effort, as we talked about earlier. Walt Disney and now the Disney Company designs these things with such detail from the Imagineers there's detail. so and much detail. There's so much, and there's so many things to do, such as, you know, um, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. There are games within yes, the parks. Yes, or there's the Perry the Platypus at... They've changed that oh, now, yeah. So there sorry. it's it, there are so many things, but it's still there. Yeah, it's there's, there's like treasure hunts within the parks. Yeah, there's a lot of things to do. So a week is not too long by any means. No. It's a good vacation. Plan it well. Don't overdo it. And, and you'll have, have a great water time. parks. Yeah. Like especially, you know, in the winter, even into spring break time, there can be cool days in the water parks. Cool as in weather. Yeah. But in the summer they're great. Again, go early. Mm-hmm. You can never really be there for too long. There's so much detail. You could go for a month and still find new things. It's, you know, I tell people after over a hundred weeks spent there in the last 48 years, I still literally every trip, there's something new, whether it's a new attraction that's opened or a new restaurant or whatever the case may be, a new tour. So, you know, even after all this time, I still find something new each and every visit. That's two or three times a year. 
Yeah. So um, don't worry about it. Do it for a week. Enjoy yourself. Don't overdo your schedule. So that was question number 10. So we're going to do rapid fire uh, recall. When is the best time to go? No whenever, definitive answer. <laughs> whenever is best for you is the best time to go. If Lower you're, crowds, if you're from Canada, late August, uh, if there's different spring breaks, I recommend you go on yours because that is always a great time to go. Yeah, our spring break is busy, but it's not, you know, if you do it, if you just plan your, your trip properly, you're good. Yeah. How much does it cost? It varies, but it's not a cheap or budget vacation is the underlying. So, yes, so it ranges from 2500 to 8800 Eighty hundred? Eight thousand. Same thing. <laughs> Is that the new math? Yeah, eighty hundred. <laughs> also, quick thing for question one. If you do want to go to a certain Halloween party or Christmas party, go like a week or two before the actual event. Like the second or third week of December, great time to go. Or like late August, early September, great time to go for the Halloween party as well. Yeah, you, the Halloween party actually starts in August and we've hit yeah. that a few times. It's, it's, it's great. It's hot, but it's fun. Okay, where should I stay? Stay on site and mm -hmm. stay in the highest level of hotel that your budget will permit. That's yeah. my recommendation there. How young is too young or what is the best age? For me, seven is a perfect age, but you might want to go a little bit higher or a little bit lower depending on how tall your child is or how much stamina they have for walking around the parks. Yeah. And two... They'll have fun. Four, they'll remember that fun, yeah. generally speaking. Five, isn't Walt Disney World just for kids? Not by a long shot. And this is coming from a kid because she sees us do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's lots of things to do there. It is a lot more than just parks, which leads us into number six. Won't I get bored going to theme parks every single day? Oh my goodness, no. No, I you won't. The theme parks are different and you're not going to spend 10 hours a day in the parks. Yeah. Please, please don't spend that. Don't do that to yourself. No. Enjoy the parks in six-hour bursts yeah. at the most. Should I get a dining plan? Uh, for us, no, but... For you, maybe. If you're not a big eater, yeah, it's probably... Yeah, those are the main things I would think. Look at the cost. Consider what you eat. Also consider that if you get one, you still may be spending cash on meals anyway because yeah. you're using two credits on Cinderella's Royal Table yeah. or Le Selge or yeah. any of these other... if you want to go to all of the... Like the main commercialized ones, you're going to run out of credits. The signature. Yeah. Yeah. The good, the, the top tier restaurants typically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number eight. What is a park hopper and should I get one? Definitely. Get one. Park no hopper question. allows you to go to more than one park a day. It's not, don't think of it as I'm going to have to do six hours in one park and six hours in another park. It's not that way at all. It just gives you a ton of convenience yeah. for dining, shopping, and any other things, or just going for one ride or to see a character, whatever it is. And or if just, you don't, you're going to wish you've had one. Yeah, yeah. So the thing about that is you can't just buy it for two people. Any of these things, yeah, you have to buy it for your entire party at the time. Yeah. Number nine, do you need to rent a car? We don't. But Sometimes we do. Yeah, but typically we don't. But if you're staying at Saratoga, Animal Kingdom Lodge, Old Key West, or Wilderness Lodge, you it would be a good investment. Yeah. But you know what? She mentioned uh, Lyft and Uber. And yeah. really, we, we're renting cars less because my uh, brother-in-law took an Uber to the Millennium Mall in, Flor in Florida, or the Florida Mall, one of those malls. And he said it was so, so inexpensive, way you know less than renting a car. So... Uber and Lyft have really taken uh, the need to rent a car down a lot. Yep. So consider those. And then 10, how many days are enough? I would say minimum four. I'd say a good time to go is seven and eight days, probably a perfect amount. Yeah. A week's vacation there is just fine. So stick with that. And there you have it, our top 10 most commonly asked questions. And uh, answers. And answers. So those are our opinions. If you have any uh, comments or questions beyond that, please feel free to visit us at 1923mainstreet.com. Contact us and we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to get back from you. Thank you so much for listening and we hope you enjoyed this episode. Yes. Check us out on social media, 1923 Main Street on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks everyone. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.